Hi there, this is Nam Julie. You can call me NJ because it is to memorize. I am a founder of NJ Studio since 2004, specializing in computation visualization. I'm very interested in the data in terms of developing the design process because you know the data has a lot of uh, insight and actually it's very fun to process the data to set up a design process. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about my interest and my projects. Hopefully it helps you to communicate my understanding of the data and design process with you guys. I mean, everyone has their own sort of definition and understanding of the design process and each jargon or term, right? But my understanding of the data is basically everywhere, you know. You, every time you design, every time you communicate with other people in daily life, you keep producing the data and process internally. I mean, explicit way or implicit way, right? So particularly, I have three topics to discuss today. The first one is data, ranging from product level to urban scale. The second topic is about the methodology to compute, to process the data. The last one is how we cook the methodology based on your, you know, based on your purpose, like I'm going to design facade, or I'm going to design some urban area, or I'm going to analysis this particular area. I mean, it's basically process. So I think, uh, I think we can call it something like system, yeah? So in the big umbrella, we can think about this is a sort of a computational design or a numerical design or a parametric or algorithmic. I mean, it depends on your purpose. Which, which one do you want to emphasize? Why you use computational methodology to, to, to develop your idea or to process your design data? Sometimes people use computational design for optimization or fabrication or generative design. So my definition of the computational design is basically process data. And then we can extract or leave you some insight that possibly help us to make some design decision, right? So before we actually start, I want to ask you guys, what is data? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of definition in different domain, like in computer science, people think about, oh, data is a numeric number, or some string, or some structured information. I mean, there's a lot of, like, sort of interpretation. But my understanding of data in this context, something you can actually aware of it, in case that you can translate phenomena or some behavior or some, I don't know, some geometry or whatever, um, as a numeric number to be compute. So we can actually consider this as data for your design. I don't need to talk about this topic deeply because this is a very well-defined term. But the point I want to make in this context is uh, in case that you can recognize something, we can consider it as a data. So just think about, so architecture is basically dealing with some you know, shapes or 3D geometry. So you know, geometry, which is data, or our environment like you know, temperature, wind speed, and sunlight, or shadowness. We can also consider they are data. So what else we have? Population or economic information. We are human beings, so emotional also become data. Um, I think the interaction is also data, and material is also data, right? I think you got my point, right? I guess more refined term is data, uh, we can found data at different scale like geometry, architecture, urban, landscape, or material, or fabrication, or building energy, whatever. As long as you detect, as long as you recognize, you can process them and use them for your design process or decision making process, okay? So in computer science, basically they're dealing with data, right? Because their primary job is to create the program to process data, right? So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I mean, the importance of the data structure is to become crucial. There are different types of data structure in a conventional way, or you can customize your own data structure. But particularly, we are dealing with the spatial information, right? Because I'm architectural designer, you are urban designer, you are landscape designer. We basically dealing with all spatial information, right? So what I want to talk about is the data structure for process spatial information. How we process the spatial information, right? Such as graph, or 2D matrix, or 3D tensors things like that. Let me summarize a little bit. So now we have data and then we have a data structure to process this data, right? And then we basically orchestra and then make some, some recipe to cook this data structure with data. So we can start thinking about something like system. I mean, I'm a work as a software engineer myself. So basically 
most of my job is to create the pipeline or architecture, not like architecture or architecture, it's like a software architecture. So basically, we have a data, data is like continuous flow based on the interaction or some input or some other functions to trigger the, the pipeline. And then pipeline is basically switch the data structure to process the data. So, um, but in terms of the design, we have a better term like design process. So my understanding and definition of computational design is more about to think about how we translate the design process as a computational pipeline. So we can say, we can say this kind of thing is a system for design. So such as uh, optimization or automation or agent-based design system, rule-based or generative design or data-driven design or like setting up complex system in design. Let me summarize before we looking at some example or research projects, okay? So as a primary resources, as long as you detect, we can consider this is data based on your purpose or your design process. We can deploy data structure to process the data. And also we can package them as a system. So inside of the system, there's a lot of the data structure and functions and computation to cook the data, okay? It's like a restaurant, yeah? So we have, we have like vegetable and meat based on the menu in your restaurant. Actually, we have our own recipe, right? So computation design is just, you know, learn your restaurant. I think this is a good example. Now we can see what is data and how to cook the data in design process. Let's start data at urban scale. Um, this is one of my projects I, I did in Media Lab 2016, I guess. This project is actually talking about the third place data um, in terms of analyzing some particular area in your urban context. There should be two types of data, like continuous data and discrete data. So in this project, I'm trying to narrate how we extract urban data and then we interpolate discrete data as continuous data because every data has actually their own relationship between them. So in this context, I'm trying to mimic sort of a complex system to play with data based on the network system. So I think I don't need to explain the project, but we can just focus on the data and methodology, okay? So in this, uh, the picture down there, this is like a plane of a district. So, you know, a space in a city, there are different types of data, as I said, such as like a sunlight or slopeness or waterness, um, like wind or viewability or things like that. So what if we actually parse this kind of information in, in real world to the digital world? So in this context, we can um, create some of a pixelized area to catch the individual space each space talk their neighbor. So actually we have a better you know, system to process the data um, in different layers. Just imagine that we have uh, this kind of data structure and then we have a uh, multiple agent that they have their own, you know, sort of um, rule or tendency to looking for some place. So for example, I don't like, like sunlight, okay? I really like them walking through uh, under the sun, for example. Based on different circumstances, or tendency, we can um, define the space as a numerical data or numbers. And this is the another urban data project. Um, but these days, it's become very conventional works. But what I did is in Boston area, um, there's two types of data. We have like sort of top-down data. Top-down means like the government or agent, they actually create the data set on the basis of their purpose, but I don't know. But what I'm saying is all top-down data has their own purpose. And the bottom-up data is actually individual create the data. And then we're trying to understand what is the relationship between top-down and bottom-up data in this project. So I used the, um, um, as I said, the Boston local government uh, provide us with a lot of data, like building energy or some economic or social information. Also, I passed some real estate information from Jello and Craigslist. Also, I passed individual like the Google Street Map based on this pixelized area up there. So at the end of the day, we get like more than 100 dimension in each area in that pixel, which is representing a space. 
by looking at some correlation or let's say um, supervised or unsupervised learning, we can um, we can sometimes prove our assumption toward each space, or sometimes we can actually find some interesting you know, things that we need to address. Or this is sort of the derived result not only has something to do with their own data layer, but also it has something to do with some data that we forgot. So I think this is very interesting um, explanation and the process, I mean the iterative process to dive into understanding physical circumstance or situation with data. I think that this is very interesting in terms of setting up design process with data. I guess this is not about the design, it's more about like how to use your design intuition. It's more about like domain knowledge. So what I mean by that is the computation design is not just about understanding and deploying some computer science knowledge. It's more about like a converge, setting your own design process and thinking process in a computational way. This is my thesis project, Herbert GSD. There are actually two different processes. One process is just like machine learning things to train um, the existing information to predict something in the future. Second phase is uh, more about like a reconstruct a geometry on the basis of the prediction that machine provide. Uh, on the second phase, I think machine error could be machine creativeness because just like a big factory, we can you know uh, precisely mass product something. We can see there is no creativeness, right? However, someone did something that we never thought about it. So we can consider, oh, this is like a very you know, creative approach and things like that. So what I'm trying to do is how I ask machine produce something that we never experienced out of a prediction by machine learning. You know, the color. Color is very you know, essential information for design with shapes. There are conventional way to process two different color, like branding mode, you know. There's like screen or multiply. I couldn't really remember all of them, but you know. It provides us like some equation to uh, process pixels. I took advantage of this kind of equation to process a three-dimensional voxelized area because individual voxel has their own pixels. So we can actually consider voxel as a multiple layer of pixels. Like a, like a two-dimensional array. So um, this is also talk about you know how we process the, the spatial information and the we how to reconstruct the 3D geometry out of 2D image. Let's jump to other topic. Optimization. So I think the optimization is a is very popular term for computational design because everyone wanted to optimize their design process or fabrication whatever I mean the automation and optimization is actually give us your better profit right so um, this is one of my project as an example of optimization this project is uh, um, to think about you know parking lot in Singapore so at that time I work at flux we have a client in the Singapore and then they ask us like okay so we have a random boundary site and we really wanted to make a very compact parking lot there which fit our law. We have a precast, like a modularized system that actually assemble entire parking lot. So we create some sort of grid optimizer in that context to compare which one is better or we can assign some particular rule that possibly affect the result of optimization. So which is really fun because you know in terms of optimization I guess the more restriction or confinement limitation inside my imagination how machine or how algorithm react so which is actually really fun just think about it we can uh, set up a ecosystem or environment and we set up some rule or some sort of like a hierarchy or ecosystem how they react to each other let's say create a game environment and then we can um, give us some particular circumstance or situation and then we can monitor how they react and then based on their reaction we can parse the information as a result we can keep tracking actually your action is become part of design process and then this action is a result uh, this action is because the other result and the other results it's like a chain effects so we can capture this kind of entire action series and then compare different action series yeah you got my point right 
So also in this project is um, we have two different modes. One mode is like a 100% optimization using brute force algorithm. The second thing is that, oh, we want to play with the parameter. Yeah. But at the same time, you want to see the option at least above 90% in that building. So we open all parameter. Even we can actually categorize like a linking system, like for example, where is the entrance, right? It's because the entrance is possibly affect entire shape of parking lot, right? And also, wh what if we wanted to have more sunlight? I mean, just forget about the parking lot. Just think about like a residential building, yeah? So we can also integrate this kind of algorithm on top of this optimization, yeah? So we can achieve it by dealing with data and set up the algorithm to cook the data structure that possibly you know, process the data. Let's jump to other topic, data at structure. So, um, I mean, structure is itself is a very different story and it's like a, it's not a fun, it's like a more serious things. Um, you know, very hardcore engineer, they're dealing with the data very seriously um, to uh, prove the structure or optimize the structures. But in this project, um, it's more about like explore the design options based on the rule. So as you can see, we want to install a loop in that place. What's, what is the best places for locating um, columns to support ceiling, right? So in this context, we set up the rule and then each iteration, the column is actually try to move to the direction that support more weight. Yeah. At the same time, there's a people representing a particle um, that actually push the column because I don't want column. Yeah. I want to just work. Yeah. The column cannot be block me. Right. And also at the same time, there's a even, you know, the, some building or some fixed situation or some void space. Also, we can take advantage of this kind of, of this kind of a given situation. So we can dump this data and then set up the right data structure to process the data. And then we can see how the each rule can fight each other in order to meet some particular result that we can consider as an optimization. Um, the best place in given situation. So what I'm trying to say is that at least to play with data give you some good sense of how you interrupt the design process and how to set up your own decision making process. Which one is like, you know, the, like a, something like, think about like the tree structures, like it has a, like a, so we have a root, right? And then the branches comes up and sometimes we need to divulge or converge in order to explore this possibility let's say design options because some option is actually meet some particular criteria but the other one is it's like um, uh, sometimes it's not uh, meet other design specifications so i mean computation design is more about like as a god um, set up the ecosystem and and interrupt the ecosystem iterative way to see what is the best outcome that you are looking for. So, I mean, this kind of uh, approach and stance is uh, also a really good um, example um, what is the data in design. This is the, some plugin I developed. Um, you can actually download from Food for Lino. Um, I mean, because, you know, geometry is uh, the most essential and basic um, ingredient or resources because you are designer, right? You're gonna make something in space. So in this context, we we must understand the geometric concept. So in that in that plugin, help us designer to focus their own design process by taking advantage of like a necessary uh, analysis of shape that you are playing with. I just wanted to remind of you guys to, you know, I mean, basic is always important. So what is the basic data for design? Yeah, obviously point, vector, line, polyline, or like surface or mesh. This kind of object is a full of data actually. I mean, previously we talked about the data in design. It's really hard to deal with the data directly. So what I mean by that is that we need to remap or uh, not remap. It's, it's like um, 
representing something, some data in space as a geometric concept, like point or vector, or vector flow. You know, so no one actually think about, maybe it's really hard to understand, uh, let's say, four number to indicating wind, x, y, z, and time, or strength. Yeah? But we have only one vector. We can easy to visualize the numeric information as a visual information, right? So in this context, I think the geometry is needless to mention. Geometry has a flow data, which is really important for us. Again, landscape. Because um, I have several friends specializing in landscape design. Because as I said, um, I'm always interested in data. Yeah. So, I mean, the computation design or methodology or thinking process is a little bit e evolved as time goes by. But the most important thing is that the data, where is my data to cook? So I'm always looking for the data, data. So landscape, again, this is very interesting um, playground for me to deploy my algorithm and my thought process, let's say my amusement. Um, I mean, the environment has obviously um, it has a very important data for design process. Think about it, you know, sound is really important. So, so for example, you know, um, this is my design. Looks beautiful, right? So you can say like that to your, your client, but the most convincing way to pursue the client is like, oh, this is data, right? So this design options actually show this kind of performance in terms of the energy uses. However, this option, this option is better resolved in that site by doing this kind of simulation. Yeah. So, um, understanding, analyzing the site or environment in your design, it actually gives us like a very good starting point, and this raw data is can actually affect your end product. So which is really fun, right? So data has like a steam line affecting, you know, from the, the all the way the down to up. So this is also, you know, creating some kind of ecosystem, how data cook and extract and process and the post process. Um, I mean, there's a lot of time, but, um, but you got my point, right? Uh, the landscape or environment in this context become gold mine. And at least it gives you to start. Where will you start? Yeah. Yeah. So image. So image is let's say five-dimensional data array. Do you know why five dimension? Because uh, it has an X and Y, and then color RGB alpha. So we can say like RGB A X Y. No. RGB Y and position X Y. Let's say five. Yeah. So. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, so we can, you can see the picture, right? So human, is, human eye side is really good at detecting some pattern from the image, which is good, right? However, the machine has no concept of this kind of things. So, I mean, which is, which is very well defined um, things in computer vision or machine learning area. I want to focus on the, our issue like data in design things. As I said, myself work as a software engineer and GIS firm. There is a, there is a, a concept, remote sensing. So based on the color difference, we can um, uh, extract some pattern or uh, clustering some random data as a group, which is also visual, you know, cue people understand easily. So, I mean, the image process is a uh, one thing designer need to take a look at because uh, in this modern society there is a lot of information like a video image they are essentially the same just with, with, with timeline nothing special so I guess um, individual image has their own pixel like, like a two-dimensional array as I said so each array has their own unique value uh, consist of like RGB uh, alpha last value the computer uh, is dealing with the number and they are very, they are very precise, absolutely precise. They are really, really picky. Uh, the difference in number, so we can utilize this kind of a picky concept of computer in your design. So, image processing give us just not just like concept, you know, but it more give us more precise um, location in terms of the remote sensing or pixel components. If you really zoom in a image. It has like a very, um, like a scale-like pixel. 
they have discrete information. It looks like a continuous information, but if you zoom in uh, enough, you can see the difference and then you can cluster the pattern and maximize the difference to extract some revealing pattern. I mean, all kind of a process is up to your design process. So what I mean by that is there's data in image for you. So looking at the image as a data set for your design is also to open more possibility in your design iteration. Data at fabrication. I'm not a fabrication expertise, but, but I'm really interested in fabrication because there's data, right? So I, I guess the data in fabrication is more about like optimization or automation, find better in a uh, moment to um, fabricate them or analyze them because the fabrication is dealing with the physical material. So in that context, we um, need a strategy, you know, to make a progress step to, you know, fabricate from digital model to physical model, right? I have uh, several projects involving fabrication as a team or personal works. Also, uh, there's a, a very simple fabrication tool called Architectural Compiler that you can download from Food for Lino. So we have a data and material. Um, this is a research project as a team project with other people. Um, my role is to develop parametric model based on the property of the material. In that material, the assumption is that this is swellable material. It exposed to the air or water and it's swellable a certain amount of ratio and it, it contract and swell. Think about it. How can you parameterize this information? I'm already giving you all answers. Yeah. So again, we have a parameter. Parameter can be considered as a data. It's like a, let's say, not like a constant variable. It's not like a, it's, it's variable, variable. It can be changed. It's like a mutable data. You can actually set up this kind of relationship and then maximum minimum between this domain a parameter, uh, let's say uh, injecting dynamic data to the process. And then the process is cook the data and at the end of the stage, they visualizing as a shape um, as a result of cooking data. So as you can see, there's like some parametric model we test the moment that break automatically and how we prevent from like breaking itself. There's some particular, there's some innovative uh, material exper experimentation. After that experimentation, we have a better sort of, um, you know, parameters, which is nonlinear, possibly or linear. So we can apply this kind of a logic to proof of concept of the design. In this project, we have no particular data, but we know, we know the environment data can live in. So in that context, we actually push multiple data or some, some, some combination of the data as an input, and then we can visualize different types of result as a simulation based on the algorithm that you set up, which is design process. Yeah, make sense? So inaction is also data, which is project with a robot arm. Again, this is a team project. I'm in charge of developing um, the inaction things. There are a lot of sensors, like iPhone, you know, even VR, AR, it is all about like inaction. So the, the, the interesting point of the data from inaction is it has a sequences. The sequence means it has a tendency. We can group them, we can predict them. Let's think a little bit differently. So the parametric design or some design process, what if we have some interactive um, design input in each, in each design processes? We can create a more like an interesting, complex design playground where data can be processed. Actually produce the other data set. It's like a circular chain effects. They're talking each other. Because computation designers is not just about setting up the a design process, but more about how to package knowledge into one um, form of a program, for example. Let me take an example. So we, we created some complex design algorithm that resolve much more complex design problems. Uh, in that context, you know the interface, right? How algorithm works each other, right? 
However, you have no idea. Yeah. Well, your coworker has no idea. So my understanding of developing the CAD system design algorithm is more about the packing existing knowledge such as like a mathematics or some computer science data structure things um, as a, your own sort of design solution and then you can package them as a product. What I'm trying to say is that program or some algorithm is set of knowledge. So we need to give us some index how to indexing the set of knowledge that you pack in that software. So this is the other sort of game-like environment for landscape designers because the project is more about like, think about complex system. Actually, it's not a complex system compared to the real world. It's more, more about like a mimicking complex system. So what I mean by that is uh, one action uh, affects the other entity such as tree in this example. And then tree is actually glow up and then they produce their product yeah and then you can actually extract the tree from the ground meaning that you can make money out of this tree you know throughout your factory so what happened you know the factory produced carbon dioxide which make our environment angry so i mean this is a simple rule uh, everyone knows even my nephew and niece understand this complex system but you know Creating this kind of system is really important in terms of how we deal with the data in real time or uh, in, in different like uh, actions. So I think this is the beauty of the computation design, I guess, because human being can assume, but it's harder to calculate precisely. But computer can do because you know it's really fast and precise. Um, so computation design for the Asian based like complex system um, is uh, it's more about uh, let's say I think it's more about like a produce data rather than consume data I guess this is my thesis project uh, this project is again this is more about like data driven design process how we you know create the environment to process data but particularly in this uh, experimentation in the throughout the design process um, I set up a particle system. You know, particle is just like, you need a lot of computation expense, but human being couldn't calculate, but computer does, you know? So you ca as you can see, the yellow means like static areas, blue means high velocity. So we can see, I mean, set up the, f set up the algorithm and then human being actually extract some insight because we are really good at looking at the pattern and revealing some group and visual language or pattern. So I think this kind of um, like co-work between human and computer, which is a really good um, the combination in design process, uh, I guess. Also we can simulating between like the winter to all the way summer to you know, predict and actually not predict, it calculated the sun path, which is really important in that project to distribute the module in that site. So I think this kind of job can be done easily by computation design with data. Also, there are multiple interests around the data in my practice, um, like, you know, some video work and animation and 3D graphics, 3D printings and developing some softwares. I mean, it looks different, but to me, it's really, really consistent because um, I look at different projects with the one lens data. I have a several like exhibition based on my interest, like image process and, you know, um, basically convert real world as a numeric number that we can process as, as, as data. So I think this kind of uh, process is a very interesting that we didn't do this in the past, but these days, thanks to computational power and then machine learning algorithm, we can just take advantage um, in order to support your design or developing your design algorithm, developing your design process uh, with data that you can actually generate by machine learning, things like that. The data is some of uh, the computer language, right? Actually, we need to convert the data as a human language, as a picture or some, some shapes by rendering or drawing or whatever. I, I'm really interested in the, the, the representation of 
um, the data, um, let's say like a visualizing or rendering or things like that. I guess the visualization skill is become essential essential skill for those who are dealing with data. With this interest, I have been working in different practice like designing or making some lecture or some workshop classes and then also I created several books in terms of computation and design with data and also there's several like PDF books that you can download even for visualization again I think that when you talk about the data we also need to talk visualization anyhow so um, so these are sort of um, domain that I'm interested in and technology I have been utilized uh, throughout my projects and researches. Obviously, this is a very generic keyword um, that I'm really into. These are tools, basically. For what? To understanding our environment, to facilitating your design process and make sure your design process on the right way or correct way. I, I believe this kind of knowledge in different domains. I don't know, designer is sometimes very passive, but I feel like, uh, I mean, as time goes by, the paradigm shift, it becomes more, you know, crazy. The de it's time to designers to open their eyes and then, you know, communicating with different domains and then how they react, how they prepare for the new feature. Um, I really like, like push the boundary, particularly for the design process, uh, as a computation designer or, or specialist. I think it's, yeah, as time goes by, many people you know, open to utilize and then talk about this kind of topic, this kind of technology to understand their design process and maximize the possibility, you know. This is sort of my last material. I have two different YouTube channels. One YouTube is for English. Um, it's not active because I have a Korean one. Uh, there's a lot of material in English, but, but Korean has limited information. So uh, I feel like I think um, I need to, you know, help them uh, because I'm Korean. This is, this is sort of my vocation, let's say. Um, so now we are reached at the end of the slide. I appreciate your time to listen to my presentation and my understanding of computation design and data in design or design thinking or design process whatever i'm still learning and interacting with other people to exchange knowledge and experience push the boundary i'm not saying these are the computation design there's more actually so but at least by talking a little bit about my projects and my thought and my researches as examples for those who have no idea about what the computation design or data in design before, at least they have like a little, you know, clue or little as a starting point to, to start thinking about. If you guys have any question, please leave a message. If I have time, I'm definitely diving into the discussion, then talking, and we can make fun. Thank you.